to craft a new program that spotlights Black, African, Caribbean, Canadian artists and their journey to become a creator. to be a little bit less drastic today. I'm just wearing a black sweater. I don't know if that's exactly. presentable in my little headband here. But you look fabulous. You look beautiful. Oh, right? no, thanks. My, my, my <laughs> is, I am never without my fur, girl. I know. <laughs> what, what, yeah. my, what are my signatures? <laughs> okay. So um, I just want to introduce you first. Um, your name is Nadia Babu, right? Yes. And you are an image consultant um, slash public speaker slash fashionista. So yes. that's my words. Now I want you to introduce yourself in your words. Okay. Well, thank you. I, I am an image consultant. Um, people, you know, aka personal branding coach, personal presence coach, it's all pretty much the same thing. It's all about how you present yourself to the world through mm -hmm. your style, your personal style, your wardrobe, your communication skills, mm -hmm. so your, you know, your verbal and non-verbals and, um, and, you know, just your, your whole personal presence, your energy, how you interact with others. That's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Putting yourself out there and showing up in your best self. Awesome. So how did you get started in, in doing something like this? It's, 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 some. Um, it's something that I know is needed in the entertainment industry. And that's why I'm talking to you um, because it is a big thing now, especially now that we're all online. Um, and I want to know how did you um, first get into it? And then how have you made the transition now into it being a, a virtual world in terms of how you present your product? Or your okay. Product? Okay. Definitely. Okay, great. Well, I, God, I fell into it. I've always been in the beauty and fashion industry, mm -hmm. um, right from you know my early twenties. Uh, started off in the cosmetics industry, but I actually fell into image consulting itself um, just out of survival. It was. Mm -hmm. It came after I was laid off from my corporate job. I was working for one of the major cosmetic companies mm -hmm. um, in public relations and communication. So I have a PR and PR background, okay. and. Um, you know, it was just a sign of the times. It was happening all over the place. Called yeah. called in one day and told the whole department was gone. Mm -hmm. And um, decided, I was thinking, what am I going to do with myself? And actually, a friend of mine just came to me and said, well, why didn't you look at image consulting? Because it's a beautiful marriage of the fashion and beauty end and the PR end of what I, you know, of my experience and just right. marries them together. And... Right. It's so it, it and now it is now what's evolved into what we call personal branding now. Mm -hmm. Image consultant is the traditional term, which I still use. It's what was used way back in the day when image consultants actually first were um, more related to celebrities. Right. Yes. <laughs> so they always celebrities always had their image consultants, politicians, you know, people of power, people more in the public eye always had an image consultant. Mm -hmm. And uh, nowadays, it's become something that everyone needs. Everybody realizes the value of it, of right. putting out, of having a personal brand and really marketing that effectively. Right. So whether you are, you know, a celebrity in the entertainment field, whether you are an entrepreneur, a business person, we all need our brands and especially people in the public spotlight in the entertainment world. Mm -hmm. It's so essential because you are under, as you know, you are under, you know, like constant, you know, scrutiny all the time. Yeah. And yes. And so you need to make sure that your brand is aligned with, um, you know, with who you are as an artist, yeah. you know, your values and beliefs It needs to be around, you know, it, and it needs to be consistent at all times. Mm -hmm. So that's what I, I help people to strive for. Okay. So um, I, I was looking at your website um, and you mentioned um, about the fact that your your brand more caters to women over 40. Yes. Um, was that something on purpose or did it just kind of morph into that? Like, because 
I know that, you know, you weren't always over 40. I'm assuming that's why. <laughs> right. So <laughs> why did you think it was important to cater to that particular demographic? Well, I, I myself am a woman over 40. I'm in my mm -hmm. 50s now. Mm -hmm. And I've found that my that women of this of this era, you know, at this stage in our lives, we are at a transitional point in our lives. Mm -hmm. A lot of us have come through. Oh my goodness, so much! I myself have come through. Uh, you know, okay, been, we've gone sure. through divorce. We have, you know, so we've gone through um, our, the stage in our families where we've raised our kids. Our kids. A lot of us are facing an empty nest. Yeah, um, and. At this point in our lives, we have more flexibility and freedom, hopefully. Mm -hmm. And we are starting to think about where we are in our lives. We wake up and think, okay, what am I doing? Have I been living the life that I really want to be living? Yeah. A lot of us start to think about a transition now. Maybe I don't want to be in this career anymore. Maybe I mm -hmm. want to transition somewhere else in this industry. Maybe mm -hmm. I want to level up. Maybe I want to start something completely new. Yeah. And we have the opportunity. Now we have, we've established ourselves. We have the experience. Mm -hmm. We have the expertise. We, you know, and we have the maturity now mm -hmm. to take on something new. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, women in this stage are also, even though we're ready to, there's still a lot of doubt. Mm -hmm. There's still a lot of hesitation, that mm -hmm. lack of self-confidence. Yeah. You know, and I don't, we, even though we've come so far, we start to question, are we really able to do it? Right. Because I know because I went through that myself. Yes. I went through that myself. And you know what? It's never too late. My slogan is it's never too late. You're That's my too slogan late. too. That's why I reached out to you. The hashtag is never too late. I knew that I found my sister right. told you. <laughs> it's never too late. And you are never too old. You can start at any time to yeah. rebrand yourself and start whatever new career or new project or whatever yeah. it is that you want to do mm -hmm. and now it's a matter of redefining it so taking mm -hmm. a look at your experiences what you've achieved and you know what you want to accomplish what's your passion right you know what what do you believe in what do you what are you trying to achieve and let's you know let's define that let's package it let's market it and let's get you out there helping the people and touching the lives of the people yeah. that you want you want to touch yeah i think it's definitely important as we mature to become more of a mentor um because we have lived certain things that the the generation behind us still hasn't yeah. learned and i think that it's, it's a it's almost a responsibility um to learn what the new generation is doing and also try to still be authentic to yourself and your values you don't want to try to act like you're 16 you know, no. and try to appeal to, you know, young people. But I think there is some merit in owning the fact that you are a mature woman and it's never too late and reminding people that it doesn't matter what you go through in life. So I, I love that message, Nadia. So kudos to you for, for bringing that to the forefront. Um, I also wanted to ask you, so um, my brand, I, I promote Black, African, Caribbean, Canadian artists for the most part. Um, the reason why I wanted to loop you in is because you are technically a creator. You've created something um, that is, as you said, needed, but you've put a unique spin on it. Um, and as a woman of color, um, I wanted to ask you, first of all, what's your background? Give you a little I'm, bit. South, I'm South African. Okay, so you're, you're South African and you're Canadian. Yes. Um, growing up in Canada, um, I, I, did you find there was something in your past that made you feel that having this type of a business was important for you personally? Like, was there something that made you feel like, you know, I don't like how that feels and, and, and you know, was it in the workplace? So tell me a little bit about, about that journey for you as a black woman in business, especially. Well, well, definitely good question. And I did feel it. I did feel it, um, you know, when I was, I never felt when I was younger, starting out in the beauty industry, I mean, going back, we're going back 30, 30 years, right? Mm -hmm, years mm -hmm. now. And there weren't a lot of, you know, there wasn't a lot out there. There weren't a lot of people in the industry that looked like me. Yeah. And I was lucky to have, when I first entered the field, to have um, gotten in with a company. Oops, I'm not sure what's going on. I'm losing my 
iPad. I hope my battery's not dying. Um, <laughs> uh, you gotta gotta love technology. I know. I was I was lucky to have fallen in with a company who was you know very diverse in itself, but. I faced a lot of, um, still face a lot of barriers mm -hmm. in the business because there wasn't a lot out there for us. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it was, it was sort of a contradiction because I'm out there, you know, pushing products that don't even reflect my community, Right. you know, in a lot of ways, the colors and things like that, that were out mm -hmm. there the products, you know, like, especially with the hit, with hair care, it wasn't reflecting, there was no reflection of the community. Yeah. So I almost felt like a contradiction in some ways, mm -hmm. but I always was someone who was, you know, advocating and speaking with the people when I was working with these big companies, often speaking out and saying, hey, you know what? I mean, and I, I can't even find colors that work right. well for me within our line. You know, what are people, what are women who are even of darker skin tones? How are they handling it? Because, you know, I, mm -hmm. how are all these different shades of beauty just going you know, unnoticed. Mm -hmm. So right. I was, I would often feel a little bit contradicted. I found that um, there were still those barriers where I wasn't taken as seriously in the industry and could only go so far. Yeah. You know, because again, I'm standing up there, you know, explaining, educating people on products, but mm -hmm. at the same time, there's nothing, not nothing, but a lot of times I couldn't even find something that would suit me right. as far as the colors go. Okay. So it was, it was a big contradiction. And um, so it was, I was very much an advocate for, you know, trying to bring that to the forefront and eventually mm -hmm. it took years and we're still not there. Yeah. <laughs> we're <laughs> so getting there. I the mean, industry, it's come a long way, but yeah. you know, it does have still a long way to go. Yeah, and I think what's funny about 2020, you know, obviously with all of the social injustices and the, the things that have been going on, you know, in the United States, um, it, it brought to the forefront the need for representation. So what we're finding now is, I mean, I started off my life in New York, so I came from an environment where everything, all, my, my dolls were Black, my teachers were Black, my, um, you know, images I saw on television always had Black people in it. When I came to Canada, and um, as a child, I noticed a whole different ball game. Everybody on television was was a white male, to be honest, um, on the news for the most part. I think Barbara Walters yeah. was the only other person. That Oprah came along and it made you feel a little bit more like, okay, I see it. And, you know, and it was kind of like, where are we in everything? Um, so for, for me, I can identify with what you're saying about not feeling like I see myself. Um, in it and how did you overcome the feeling that people were not hearing you because you mentioned that you know you were you were doing your job but you were talking but you felt like you were talking on deaf ears like was it your immediate supervisor or someone that you felt that wasn't getting it or just in general you just it, no you know i was fortunate that it was not my immediate supervisor mm -hmm. um it was more just the higher ups it was just more that you you know you'd look at and even so back then it's a, you know, it's a beauty industry, it's a women's industry, but who's at the top level? It's white men, right? Right. Even yes. within the beauty industry. So even seeing women at that level was mm -hmm. rare. Yeah. So to see a woman of color at that level was, you know, it just didn't exist. Yeah, I see. That's what I meant. I forgot right. to say. I meant yeah. to say in the last few months, we've been seeing a lot of these things popping up saying yes. the new CEO of this black woman. The new, yeah. CEO, you know, the new, the new CEO of that black man or black woman. So I'm like, you can see the switch, but it was so sudden, right? Yes. And yeah. the beauty industry, I think, has been a little bit more advanced in terms of that. When you think about yeah. it, in the grand scheme of it, and in, in terms yes. of having women um, and and anyone, a person of color in it, um, you know, everybody watched, um, you know, Project Runway and. Um, America's Top Model, we know they were definitely a Black representation there. Yeah. But um, in terms of image consulting, I feel like that is something that now we need to really look at as people of color, because now it almost becomes like it's important for us to still own our own ethnicity and represent ourselves because it's become like a marketing machine now you know you're almost seeing it too much and I'm like okay we want to be there but like who's the one making the decision for this ad is it genuine is it just a, a minute a minute now you're doing it because it's the thing 
Mm -hmm. And I think we need to think about longevity. How do we represent ourselves in the media, in in the arts, in fashion? Um, what are some ideas that you think to continue this? Do you think that we need to have more television shows that, you know, <laughs> promote that? Or, or what do you think we need to do? Well, I think, de I mean, definitely, you know, and especially in because here in Canada, we still don't see that diversity. Yeah. You know, we see it a little bit. I'm noticing it a little bit more on the news. Yeah. And then, and again, depending on the news, um, certain more local channels and certain yeah. areas, but it hasn't become, you're not, you're still not seeing that diversity in, Across the board, in dramas yeah. or comedies yeah. or anything like that that are yeah. happening in Canadian television. We're st yeah. we still we still are behind the times. Yeah. Um, you know, and we we it definitely needs to be happening more so. It um what I like to see and I'm I'm glad that we've had this surge mm -hmm. um, you know, but I just hope that it isn't just a passing fad. Yes, that's that what people feels. are doing it because this is what we're supposed it's to do trending. right now. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. It's trending. And then in a couple of years, it all dies oh, down and it goes away and the initiatives all of a sudden get halted. Yeah. And then where does that leave us? Yeah. So I, and I think we really do need more so to support each other as mm -hmm. a community, mm -hmm. you know, just to continue it, to continue building each other up. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, continue to and i know there's just still so many barriers out there yeah. but i'm you know wanting to see more you know black production companies out there yeah you know and i and getting out there and even you know if you have to start at you know on at a more independent level and you know keep knocking that you know keep knocking down yeah. doors and getting yourself out there i think it's just a matter of being persistent Mm -hmm. Continuing to do it, continuing to inspire our kids to do the same. Yeah. You know, to don't let this, and hopefully they will see with this, because this is trending right now, hopefully that at least will inspire them and help them give them that motivation to say, hey, I can do this too. And now is the opportune time to start something. Exactly. And, to, and get your face out there and, and, keep that momentum going. I know both um, for my kids, my son um, just graduated media arts, uh, oh, got his awesome. media arts at uh, Humber. Mm. So he's, oh, he's a Humber grad? Yeah, he's a Humber grad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's awesome. Yeah, that's my school. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and my daughter's in um, health and fitness, you know, which is, uh, you know, which is, she's very passionate about um, helping women of color as well yes. you know in the industry and being mm -hmm. more forthcoming in the industry so i think with um this younger generation just empowering them to continue this movement yes. and not to let it die off and let's, yeah. let's use it for all we can use it for Eg exactly like i'm a mom of three girls um and all of them have different unique talents my youngest is into sports too and she actually wants to do that program that your daughter's in which is ironic so um yeah we've been talking about it because she's at that she's only 13 but she's at that level where she's career exploring and i'm a yeah. youth job developer by day so i'm like all about that okay, start early and get it done yes. and i think we need to encourage our young people to start exploring ideas that involve entrepreneurship as well as working for someone and the reason why i say that is because you know as you said you could be working a great job but you're not happy there's just something there and 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 that's actually how i did this as well I, I translated my executive admin and all my different levels of work into my own way of doing things through bling events now it's not always perfect you know i probably you know will hear people saying oh you could do it this way or it should be that way look at it we're doing this right now on instagram we're supposed to do another way but that's another story right because i'm just not about the whole like okay, this is the proper way. I'm like, I want to do this and let's just try to do it. So I'm a little bit more flexible, but I realize we need to learn the right way. Yes. So I think the reason why I'm saying that is because I want people to understand that even if you think that there's all these different things that you should be doing, take it out of your head and just do it. 
right? Exactly. Because a lot of us, we put up these, these walls and, and these masks <laughs> that we have for one side of our life. So when we're at work, especially as women of color or black women, we, we put on this, you know, whatever, whatever, you know, I've always been a little bit borderline still wanting to be me. You know, I would come to work, even though I was an executive, I would work with my nails and do my designs and I get some attention, but it was minimized. It was downplayed. And I feel like we need to still be our authentic self. There's a lot of women out there. Um, Selena, the, the MP, she came out with the whole idea, you know, it's okay to go to work at, at um, Twins, you know, at the, the <laughs> government offices with her braids. You know, there's mm -hmm. a lot of women now that are more outspoken. Um, Jill Andrews, another one about the, po the bo body positive images and stuff. And I think that if we're going to be the leaders right now as, as women who are more mature, we need to also encourage people to understand your image is important, but yes. it's really just doing it. it. You know what I mean? It, all that will come. Just, just show up and get there and do it, and then it will all come. So... You know, like I've, I've learned a lot yes. in the last two years, um, and I still somehow found a way to do it on my own. Um, I'm not someone that likes to be in a box, but I do realize that sometimes having that friend or that person that can sort of give you some little tips would be handy. So what would be a tip you would yes. give um, someone as myself who's in the entertainment industry um, doing 50,000 different things, <laughs> right? wanting to be authentic but still professional what would be a tip you know that you would give me um just off the top of your head that you think well i think it's important like i and just listening to you 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 need to know yourself you mm -hmm. really need to be true to yourself mm -hmm. and finding that balance um of of what you just said you know you want to be you want to be you know you want to be authentic mm -hmm. right but we have Sort of learned still to play that game right <laughs> we still have to yeah. we still have to, to the corporate game, yeah. i think it's a matter of of understanding the balance you should always i am a big advocate for being authentic and when you're building your brand your brand is based the foundation of your brand is based on authenticity mm -hmm. on your values and beliefs you know uh sharing the story of why you you're doing what you do you know why yeah. did you choose this because that is powerful. Our stories are so powerful. Right. And if we need to share it with the world yeah. and always base the foundation in, in that, in your story, your why, your values and beliefs. Mm -hmm. And then it's a matter of, so always try to stay true to that, but then it's a matter of how do I communicate that message now mm -hmm. to different audiences? Yes. And you have to understand that different audiences people perceive you in different ways people respond to different things yes so you want to make sure that first of all know who you're talking to mm -hmm. you, you don't try and you know be everything to everyone or expect everyone to love you mm -hmm. right or even yeah. like you yeah so be be true to who you are and go send your message to those people who you know it's going to make a difference for and focus on that yeah. And then if you still need to communicate with other audiences in order to achieve certain things, mm -hmm. then you need to learn the business around it. Exactly. You need to, it's, I still think it's very important to know the etiquette, to understand those interpersonal connections, the difference in cultures and society and mm -hmm. just how different people work. Yeah. Because it's, it's not even, and just understanding those differences and working, figuring out a way to work with it. Not necessarily to diminish anything about who you are mm -hmm. or taking away from, you know, your culture or, or right. not, it's not even about um, demeaning, demeaning yourself to anybody. It's not, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about how do we learn to communicate, you know, with, uh, understanding yeah. that everybody's perception is different and we as a community choose you know as a community of color need to we're going to continually have to educate people yes <laughs> you know? yeah. and don't get yourself frustrated with it i know it's a, it's going to be an ongoing thing so mm -hmm. figure out how am i going to get through to this community what's the best way for them to understand my message yes and you, you know, know that that is something now that you're saying that it's like 
I remember like when I first started um, with Blink events, I, I was like you, I was in between jobs and I had this arts background that I was just sitting there dormant you know, I wasn't really doing what I really love. I was working all these nine to five typical, really good jobs, but I wasn't really happy. And so when I had a layoff, um, I thought, okay, I'll just be a few weeks. Then it became months. So then I just decided, okay, you know what? Um, I'm off, I have the free time now. Let me just start doing some open mics. You know, so I started with my first post. Um, actually, my, my cousin helped me to put up the Instagram and everything. My cousin, she's into this stuff. Um, I'll talk to her in, probably in a few weeks as well, hopefully like this. But um, you know, she helped me to get my social media presence on and put the first post and then the rest of it was all me. And I remember at first it was it was interesting to see um, the way how social media, especially Instagram works, where, you know, you put a post and you're all excited and then it's like, nobody likes it or nobody comments, right? And then I was like, I don't like this, right? And but then yeah. I, I just kept consistently being myself posting whatever it was I was doing, selfies, doing whatever, live videos at different functions. And then it became, you know, I grew my following to over a thousand just being me, right? So that showed me that even though there were people, in, you know, along the way who said, this is the way you have to do it. It has to be this way. And this is the part I, I was like, okay, I'll keep that in the back of my head, but I'm just gonna do it my way. Right. And I realized there are times when my way may not be perceived as the correct way by certain people but i still managed to kick down the door if they if they made me feel in any way that oh you know yeah we don't really subscribe to that brand of music or whatever i would still find a way out the back door you know and, and be coming in and saying well i'll just show you an example of what i do and that's how i end up getting into some of the venues that i've been working with and things that i've done um that i feel that people need to know that even if you're going to get some people are going to make you feel that your image doesn't suit what they're looking for or what the general public's looking for. That little voice in your head is very important. That little heart, yeah. that feeling in your heart that, no, I think I'm still gonna just try it on my own. Like like Whitney saying, you know, I'm gonna try it on my own, yeah. Yeah. right? And yeah. it, it works. Yeah. So, you know, I think we're both examples of people who always have to fit in because we're in the corporate world, so to speak. Um, we're in the professional world on, on one side of ourselves, but there's another side of ourselves that we're just that black girl that just wants to fit in. <laughs> and, you know, we come in all shades, we come in all body sizes, and we need to own that and bring that yes. to the table and know that what we're coming with is good enough and then be able to embrace each other. So I really, really understand where you're coming from. And I appreciate you saying that because I it validates me that I can still be myself. But yes. Be yeah. open to other things and listen. Which is, exactly. Yeah. I mean, you can't be anybody else but yourself. You yeah. know what I mean? And if you try to, then people are going to see through that. Yeah. If you be something you're not, they're going to yeah. see through that. And, you know, ultimately, our audience is out there. Mm -hmm. You know, our, mm -hmm. our, our community is out there. Our tribe is out there. And you, what you're saying about social media, and we get hung up on what everybody else is doing. Yeah. And we fall into that comparison trap. Yeah. And oh, she's doing it this way. And look, she's doing so well. But, you know, that's the that's way you're people. Mm -hmm. I've, I've had the same thing. People like what you said, people have come to me when I really, you know, when I relaunched the business and I was come, I was much more, you know, visible on social media. People were giving me their two cents. Oh, you yeah. know, you know what? You need to be a little more hype and maybe add some music and you need to dance around and have a dance what? party. Start. <laughs> I said, girl, I, what? That is not, and I would just exactly. nod and say, okay, yeah, thank you. I'll take that into consideration. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> and, then, and then some people would say to you me. You were getting oh, that and I was getting <laughs> toned it down. <laughs> Well, and then, but then I get that too. When I'm just when I'm too when I'm having too much fun on a, on a post, they'd say, "Oh, you need to just calm down because you're you know you, you're going to detract those corporate clients that you're looking for." And I'm like, okay, so I have to have a dance, a, what a quiet dance party. What am I what am I going for here? Yeah. So I finally just said, you know what? I'm you got to take it all with a grain of salt. With your way. And I'm going to do it my way. And my audience is out there. Exactly. And those, and it doesn't matter if only five people tune into my lives or two people tune mm -hmm. into my lives. The one person who needs to hear my message will hear it. Exactly. And we, and we have to just continue, continually do it the Be way that we do it. Yes. If that person is out there, those people are out there waiting to hear that message. Yeah. Right.
Yeah. And that's who's going to relate to us. And that's who we want. We don't need everybody else. Mm -hmm. We don't need everybody else. That's the thing. You have to be comfortable within your own bubble. And I think that's what I think a lot of us has learned right now with COVID. Mm -hmm. it's, br it's brought us right back down to reality. That yes. it doesn't matter how beautiful your nails are, how beautiful your hair is, how beautiful your, your wardrobe is. If you can't do anything, you just got to be here in your pajamas and figure out a way to work it out. Right. You can dress up and go on live, like, you know, and put on your furs and everything like, like you do and I do. But at the end of the day, it's time to really self reflect and, and figure out how and why I'm doing this. Why am I doing this? Find out why you love it. Find out what made you come on to this platform to begin with and put yourself out there publicly. So that's how I found you. I found you on, on, on social media. So it's amazing that, you know, we connected and, and we have so much in common, but you know, yes, we do. Story. it's crazy. <laughs> but um, I also wanted to ask you, so I was looking at some of your posts and, and um, you've had some involvement with the Canadian Cancer Society um, yeah. and you and your husband are doing something right now, a little challenge for yourself. Can you tell me a bit about that? Mm -hmm. So, yes. So, the challenge that we're doing is called uh, Dry Feb, Dry February, and it's a challenge put on by the Canadian Cancer Society. Mm -hmm. So for the entire month of February, we are alcohol free. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, it's not a big, not as big a deal, I'm sure. <laughs> but we <laughs> we like we're not we're not big drinkers, but we you know I I'm my it's a sacrifice. Red wine, my red wine wind down. That's me in the evenings. You know, um, as I was mentioning to you earlier, um, it's basketball season. My my husband's a big is a you know he plays, he coaches, he refs, he does everything. He's a huge fan, so he's missing his beer during the games. Mm. Um, but it's but it's in, it's important. We decided, you know what? When I saw the the challenge, I thought let's let's do this because it's good for our health. It's always good to have to cleanse, be aware of your health but it's also for a great cause mm -hmm. so we are we have set up uh, so the feb dry feb challenge um people can just go online click on to our our uh, fundraising page and make a donation directly to the canadian cancer society okay. and i am a big um supporter because i've worked with the ccs for many years through a program called look good feel better Okay. which was which is still is sponsored by the um the cosmetics industry so okay. all the major players in the cosmetics industry supply uh, products and volunteers for the program so okay. what we do is we um host workshops mm -hmm. throughout the country actually the, the program is now international Mm -hmm. It started right here in Toronto. I'm very proud to say that I was part of the pilot project and did one of the very first workshops in Canada at Princess Margaret Hospital. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's international now. Wow. And, um, and we host workshops for women going through cancer to, on their cancer journey. Mm -hmm. We help show them uh, proper skin care makeup techniques and we teach them about wigs and hair alternatives to help them manage the appearance related side effects of their treatments okay and it's an amazing program uh, a lot of people when it first was introduced you know it came across some little bit of backlash oh you know these ladies don't need this right now why you they need to bother about makeup and you know and all that look what they're going through but it really is true that how you feel looking when you look good you really do feel better i mean women we know that especially with our hair our hair is our crowning glory right mm -hmm. isn't it it is our crowning <laughs> glory and all of a sudden when something like that is taken from you it's devastating it's yeah. truly devastating and you know we take pride on how in how we look and when you are start to you know with with when you go through chemo or radiation there's a lot of changes to the skin um it gets very dry it gets mm -hmm. very sensitive um you know there's there's so much that happens within the body and it comes out on the outside and when we are not feeling well on the inside mm -hmm. there's it's it's you know it it goes hand in hand right when you're not feeling well inside you don't look good on 